Some historical predictions can be easily debunked, but there are a few historical predictions that unexplainably came true. And here they are. Number 9. Jules Verne – From the Earth to the Moon Back in 1865, there was this famous author, Jules Verne, who wrote a science fiction novel called From the Earth to the Moon. So the book was the sequel to Journey to the Center of the Earth. The book, From the Earth to the Moon, follows a Baltimore gun club. In this story, the gun club attempts to create a giant Columbiad space gun and launch three people in a projectile to the moon. Crazy, right? Well. Around the time of the Apollo 11 takeoff, it was realized that Verne had gotten rather close on many aspects. The dimensions of his projectiles are surprisingly similar to Apollo 11, as well as the three-man crew. Of course, this was 1865, and it would be nearly impossible for all of his calculations and predictions to come true. Back during this time, no one was considering landing on the moon, and no one would attempt it for over 100 years. But it didn't matter. His book was fiction and never claimed to be accurate. So considering everything that was spot on, his predictions are absolutely astounding. Other predictions by Jules Verne included the submarine from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, and the helicopter from Rover the Conqueror. Number eight, Robert Boyle, organ transplants. Robert William Boyle was a natural philosopher. He was also a chemist, a physicist, and inventor from Ireland during the 1600s. But today he is known as the first modern chemist, and often one of the founders of modern chemistry. As a child, much of his schooling was done in England. And right after his primary schooling, Boyle had developed an interest in scientific research. When he was in Ireland, he became frustrated at the lack of progression he was making in his chemical work. At one time, he called the home of Ireland a barbarous country where chemical spirits were so misunderstood and chemical instruments so unprocurable that it was hard to have any hermetic thoughts in it. Eventually, he decided to leave to Oxford. This was the beginning of his major studies in chemistry, and eventually, he would go on to make history. Although he made many scientific breakthroughs, one of Boyle's greatest feats was his wish list of 24 possible inventions such as the art of flying, perpetual light, and practicable and certain ways of finding longitudes. The best part? Most of them have already come true. But one in particular seems to stand out. The cure of diseases at a distance, or at least by transplantation, was one of Boyle's most memorable wishes. What made it even more amazing was that he predicted it 300 years prior to the first successful transplant. And let's not forget about energy healing from a distance. That's coming up quick. Whoa, he was spot on. Number seven, Ray Bradbury, earbuds. This next prediction may not be life-saving, but it is used by nearly every human on the planet on a regular basis. In Ray Bradbury's book, Fahrenheit 451, he speaks of an eerily familiar device. The little mosquito delicate dancing hum in the air, the electrical murmur of a hidden wasp snug in its special pink warm nest. The music was almost loud enough so he could follow the tune. Without turning on the light, he imagined how this room would look. His wife stretched out on the bed, uncovered and cold like a body displayed on the lid of the tomb, her eyes fixed in the ceiling by invisible threads of steel, immovable, and in her ears, the little seashells, the thimble radios tamped tight, and an electronic ocean of sound of music and talk and music and talk coming in, coming in on the shore of her unsleeping mind. The room was indeed empty, Every night, the waves came in and bore her off in their great tides of sound, floating her wide-eyed toward morning. There had been no night in the last two years that Mildred had not swum that sea, had not gladly gone down in it for the third time. The scary thing is, Ray Bradbury did not wish to predict such a future wrapped up in technology. He wanted to prevent it. Mildred, the character's wife, was so consumed with her flat panel TV and sleeping pills and seashells that she was an empty vessel, addicted to electronic devices. Number six, Dmitry Mendeleev, periodic table. Dmitry was a Russian chemist and inventor. 
He formulated the periodic law and created the first version of the periodic table of elements. Mendeleev's mother always encouraged him to patiently search divine and scientific truth. When Dmitri was a teen, that same mother took him from their home in Siberia to Moscow for a higher education after seeing his potential. But the college there would not take him. So after searching around, they found one in St. Petersburg that would. He went on to be highly honored and received many awards for his scientific discoveries and achievements. So in 1863, there were 56 known elements. His concepts on new elements were criticized and he was often just shut down. A few years later, he created the first periodic table with a few changes to the known elements and eight new ones added. He presented it with this quote. I saw in a dream a table where all elements fell into place as required. Awakening, I immediately wrote it down on a piece of paper. Only in one place did a correction later seem necessary. The elements he added wouldn't be physically discovered for quite some time. Number five, Morgan Robertson, Titanic sinking. 14 years before the historical sinking of the Titanic, Morgan Robertson wrote a novel called Futility. In his book, a ship known as the Titan that was only 25 meters shorter than the Titanic was known as an unsinkable ship. Despite this, the Titan hit an iceberg and went down in April, killing nearly everyone on board, just like the Titanic did. The ships were not only similar in length, but could both travel at a speed of over 20 knots. And though they were both full of passengers, they carried the minimum amount of required lifeboats. Funny enough, the one person who never believed the prediction was Robertson, the writer. He said, no, it was not written with clairvoyance. The similarities were explained by his extensive knowledge of shipbuilding and maritime trend, as he spent much of his boyhood and young adulthood aboard various ships. Makes sense. Number four, Nikola Tesla, texting and video calls. Tesla is known for his inventions, such as the modern alternating current, or air conditioner, and electricity supply system. But what is even more shocking is what Tesla once wrote in a magazine. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles. And the instruments through which we shall be able to do this will be amazingly simple compared with our present telephone. Interesting. A man will be able to carry one in his vest pocket. We shall be able to witness and hear events the just as though we were present. This was in 1926, 70 years before any of this, SMS, video calling, or smartphones would be available to the public. In this same interview, Tesla described the modern day world as one human brain. Number three, Mark Twain, his death. Samuel Langhorne Clemens, or better known by his pen name, Mark Twain, was made famous by his books, such as The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But what many do not know was that Mark Twain had the innate ability to predict a certain future. Mark Twain was born two weeks after Halley's Comet's closest approach in 1835. Shortly before his death, he said, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year, and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said, no doubt. Now here are these two unaccountable freaks. They came in together, and they must go out together. As predicted, on April 21st, 1910, in Redding, Connecticut, one day after the comet's closest approach to Earth, Mark Twain died of a heart attack. Had he lived his entire life knowing when he would die? Or did the realization strike him shortly before he mentioned it? Number two, Ian Forster, Internet and Man's Obsession. Ian Forster was a writer in the early 1900s. One of his greatest works may have been The Machine Stops, a futuristic sci-fi short story. The Machine Stops is about a mother and a son in a post-apocalyptic world where homes are underground and needs are provided by a machine. Everyone stays at home and communicates via video screens and instant messaging. 
It is said that the people worship this omnipotent global machine. In fact, those who do not worship the machine are deemed unmechanical and threatened with homelessness. Eventually, the machine dies due to various malfunctions. However, humans had relied on it for so long they don't know what to do. Mankind will now perish, but not before the mother and son realize that man and his connection to others through the natural world is what really matters, and that it is up to those few who never let go of that, the surface dwellers, to rebuild the human race and to prevent the mistake of the machine from being repeated. What is odd is that Forrester normally wrote about class differences and hypocrisy, and The Machine Stops was his only sci-fi story. Number one, Nostradamus, everything. Perhaps the most notorious predictor of all time was Nostradamus, who is known by many as a prophet. Some of his most famous predictions have involved great historical events. Nostradamus was often very specific in his prophecies. For instance, the blood of the just will be demanded of London, burnt by fire in the year 66, he wrote. The ancient lady will fall from her high place and many of the sect will be killed. On September 2nd, 1666, a small bakery fire broke out and turned into a fire known as the Great Fire of London. But perhaps the greatest prophecy of all was this. From the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. Beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The great part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Into a cage of iron will the great one be drawn when the child of Germany observes nothing. On April 20th, 1889, Hitler was born in Western Europe to very poor parents. He moved to Germany, convinced many to follow him, and then he invaded France. Nostradamus wasn't short on American predictions either. As he once wrote, the great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt, an evil deed foretold by the bearer of a petition. According to the prediction, another falls at nighttime during a conflict at Rheims, London and a pestilence in Tuscany. It is believed this was the great man, John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated in 1963. Bobby Kennedy, John's brother, was killed just after midnight on June 5, 1968. The world mourned both of these losses tremendously. Along with these, it is said that Nostradamus predicted the French Revolution, Napoleon's reign, Louis Pasteur's discoveries, and the 9-11 disaster. Intense. <laughs> Did any of these predictions interest you? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe, and keep watching for more.